one of the things which is very important is to have joint efforts and especially partnerships and networking so that now the message you present to these people is one i know there is competition of resources if we want to end fgm if, if that is our main goal why can't we work together if you want to work very well as a network how we work is that we build the capacity of the people on the ground uh, use the approach which is acceptable by the people you are dealing with you you may realize the concept in kuria cannot be applied in garissa when you work together you have greater impact in the society and uh, and with the people you serve this is the nfgm podcast with elias mwindi Welcome to the End FGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. I spend time with change makers who are making an impact in Kenya and beyond. Each week we listen to incredible stories of ordinary people just like you making a difference. They share their successes, failures, and what they are learning along the way. Thank you for being with me today. Let's get started. Welcome to the NFGM podcast. Uh, Elias, it's a pleasure having you here. As we start now, just tell us a little bit about yourself. I started working with the Margaret Wanzo Foundation, a foundation which was formed uh, by brothers and sisters and daughters of um, Margaret Wanzo who was killed by her husband during a domestic quarrel. and the family decided to form a foundation so that they can uh, find fight gender inequalities and that's why i found myself in this work Margaret Wanzu was born in uh, Kibwezi uh, in Makueni county and she was married in Kisumu in Nyakach sub county they were both the prison officers together with their husband and after retirement they went back home to their village and in one of the domestic um, violence uh, day the husband uh, stabbed Margaret and she died so after her death uh, we said uh, that we cannot just leave it as it is because now we have to fight the cause which led to the demise of our sister and our mother and our daughter then that's how you ended up in the anti fgm world by uh, joining a group tell us about this group what's it about Uh, after that uh, after working briefly with the Margaret Wanzo Foundation together with other uh, like-minded organizations we formed uh, the Kenya Men Engage Alliance now we decided that now we want to work with the men and boys because they are the they are the perpetrators they are the, the cause of most of the problems in in homes and we said now we cannot win this war unless now we engage them in a positive way so that they can join the fight as uh, partners as agents of change and also as clients in terms of maybe hiv testing and family planning uh, initiatives how did the dream grow into something that also came to engage organizations on on a national scale all right yes we started small we started uh, with um, three organizations as uh, the founder members of the network but on the course of our work many organizations realized that they need also to be working with men and boys in in their initiatives that's why most of the organization requested uh, to join the network and we for, uh, we drafted an MOU where now interested members can sign as they join and currently we have 16 members of the network and other affiliated uh, partners from different parts of the country how did you begin this as an individual i began when i was working with um, some groups in uh, in kuria so i was invited by one of the organizations to facilitate a session on engagement of men and boys we started working and many organizations called me to facilitate their sessions on engagement of men and boys in ending fgm and the work grew and now i have been running uh, up and down in these places engaging men <laughs> in ending fgm and so you work on uh, not just on fgm but on different aspects uh, from hiv aids to fgm as a coordinator um of this network how is it like working with organizations on a general perspective uh i i have realized that working with men organizations is uh, is a plus 
to to the organization or the individuals working in the organizations because uh, they help each other they build their ca- the capacity of each other in terms of uh, developing programs and um, conducting joint initiatives especially around issues that are affecting human beings and especially in um, in areas of fgm i have seen how networking can help in ending the, the vice because we have uh, formed a network with our counterpart in tanzania the men engage tanzania and we've conducted joint initiatives in Sirare uh, at the border and uh, the work has been progressing well bringing uh, efforts together to address key issues affecting the people your experiences your first experiences when you started working against female genital mutilation on an organizational point of view how was it like engaging communities knowing very clearly that you're not from a community that practices fgm initially uh, it was very tough because uh, basically people see you as uh, coming to to confuse them destabilize their culture and uh, bearing in mind that you don't come from th- that community they, they, they is poor um, reception of your ideas but um, as time went on uh, is we developed new strategies of working with the people of engaging them in dialogues uh, coming up with other um, issues that will lead to uh, to them talking about fgm and other issues that affect them jeremiah wakes up in the morning for example and he decides to start an organization to end fgm in his community because he's seen that there is a gap that's needed but most of the people actually do not know exactly uh they do not have the experience they end up making many mistakes uh by the end of the day before they are able to stabilize before they able to you know reach out to probably funding or um uh programming that's able to effectively uh, address issues in their communities is it something that you find is a challenge definitely it's a challenge because maybe you start and you have no ideas where to start maybe you get funding and you decide now i want to work uh, i want to address fgm in korea you don't know the terrain you don't know you have no idea of uh, the other organizations working in such places but it is good to form partnerships and collaborate with other organizations working so that now you can devise a way of addressing the issues effectively like um, if uh, you want to succeed especially in fighting fgm if you joke you end up meeting the same people who have been met several years and there is no impact at all and you are issue will just be reporting to the donors of the people you have reached but at the end of the day when you go to the ground you find there is no change the that fgm is still being practiced that uh, it is business as usual but if you collaborate and you drive um, common uh, strategies of addressing fgm it is very easy to succeed so i heard these small organizations coming up whether they have funding or not let them collaborate with other organizations working on the same so that now the work can be easy it's very difficult to convince especially young organizations to join a network because um i've had lots of people saying you know uh we are independent and we would like to implement our activities independently without any coercion or any influence from an outside force and coming together as a group of organizations sometimes brings in a a general rule probably that you people might agree on what has helped you to keep going now that organizations of course want to be independent but also want to be part of this network one of the things that have made us progress is that ours is a network but it is not registered so we get so many opportunities from uh, uh, from individuals and organizations who would like to fund certain initiatives but we know our members who, who are doing this work so we refer them to these members and they get funding so bringing people together one of the things that needs to be done is honesty people have to be very honest people have uh, to have also um, positive attitude because now you meet different people there are there are others who join the network for different motives thinking that there is a lot of money which will be given to them but when they realize here yeah, it is pulling resources together to work towards a common cause they ran away but those who have remained have benefited through capacity building through even others have even attended the conference where they have learned and they have also made friends and ne- more networks in their work how does it work what we have uh, we have um an mou where every member signs and then we develop a joint work plan for our members where now uh we we, we develop a, a, a year long work plan and now when the funds come 
we disburse the funds to our members depending on the time the, the time they will be conducting the activities and then they report back to the secretariat that's how it works it's very as simple as that uh, no many procedures develop joint work plan together we have a steering committee of of the network which sits uh, quarterly uh, and decides on the programs we still have uh, the agm for all members where we share our achievements and challenges and then we come up with uh, future plans for for the network so it has been uh, a easy process um, when you work with people in an honest way because uh, people will be feel free to tell you everything people will be uh, happy to also share whatever they have uh, uh, achieved so many people are working together some of them really would like to you know join such such avenues being able to get an access to people who are doing like minded projects but they do not know exactly how this would work in the long run does it mean that the funds just get straight from the donors to the organizations or yes it is not registered but now we have the secretariat which hosts the network in our case the movement of men against aids in kenya that is the network that receives money on behalf of the network then we have the activities of every member organizations and the, uh, what i do as the program officer i do a requisition for the money for these activities and the money is sent to the organization through the accounts department and then after they are done with the activities they report back to us they send us the narrative reports together with the financial reports for filing how has it been like working with these organizations coming from different parts with different ideological and cultural conditions that these communities face it has been good first uh, so many learning um, experiences because you get to know what communities think uh, what they feel Uh, and how they handle different issues affecting them because i've been involved in all these activities in every part of the country and i go to these places and the interactions with people with communities has, has been very much amazing it has provided a learning platform it has also made uh, me and even the other members think more about uh, empowering these communities to to a higher level how do you do it it's good to to learn that you have to engage people in a positive way So when you go to people you don't go to present your culture or your ideas to them but let them come up with the issues which affect them that's now how you you, you enter into these communities and also they also see you as one of their potential friends because now when you go to people in with with your mentality uh, in your th- or in your thoughts of thinking that these guys are doing wrong things they should be jailed they should be done whatever they should be done you will not succeed but now you hand in a positive note you engage into dialogue with them and now you agree on issues there will be differences but there are so many ways of addressing differences you just engage them in in talking and in discussing at the end of the day you find that they are at least grasping some ideas what one thing which i know you cannot change everyone and you cannot change every situation but a small step at a time will bring change when you get into these communities because i uh, i know that uh, there are many people from different parts of the country that are working tirelessly every single day to try to address different challenges in their communities how do you get into these communities currently we work with member organizations we have also religious leaders um, especially in churches where we have uh, people uh, in the churches who, who mobilize even for us uh, the people in the forums so um, we have member organizations we also we have also our potential partners in those areas so we work through them to use our members and we use uh, the established structures which are on the ground organizations have been working for years and years we've had organizations ranging back from since we had independence uh, from agriculture drawing down into uh, poverty reduction and now of course there are many other programs that are being done across different sections of our country why is it so crucial then to bring organizations together for you Right. Uh, you know, um I know it, many organizations started working a long time. That's uh, very well. But one thing which I know, changing cultures is not something easy. You you have to apply um, multifaceted approaches to hand uh, especially FGM because this is a cultural practice which has been practiced for so many years. So one of the things which is very important is to have joint efforts and especially partnerships and networking so that now the message you present to these people is one i don't come with uh, 
this plan, this strategy, and another one comes with another strategy, it brings confusion. Let everyone be involved in the fight against FGM. That's why we embrace the issue of engaging men and boys, of working with traditional leaders, working with religious leaders, so that everyone in his space can talk about FGM. And we can we make sure that this message is passed to all people uh, all the time, in every place. Men engage uh, specifically deals with men, I'd presume, um, because that's what the name <laughs> really refers to. And in the long run, you realize that men are, in most communities at least, are the custodians of culture, meaning that they are the ones who decide when gas or boys are cut. They're the ones who predict, you know, seasons. Uh, they're the ones whose economic activities really affect uh, the, the holding of certain ceremonies, uh, depending on whether it's rained or not. And they also have lots of prejudices, having been brought up in these cultures and not being able to understand why exactly women should not be cut while boys are being cut, for example. How do you address such in different communities? In most of my discussion with men, um, they have been talking about what happens because they tell me now, uh, you know, we when during uh, sexual activities, we, we, we find that these uh, women are not responding. And then I, I ask them now, is this the way to go now? What they say, no, I, I think uh, we, we need to stop this thing because now it is affecting us. Initially, people thought that um, it affects women only. But when I realized and I got the information from them that it also affects them in one way or the other, I said, now that is an entry point now where I, I, I'll address the issue of FGM because now I'll talk uh, with them in regards to what affects them. And because they are the custodians of culture, it is very easy. If they say uh, FGM will not be practiced in my home, that definitely will uh, will happen. It will not be practiced. We did um, a research uh, on um, engagement of uh, men on ending FGM, and we developed what is called uh, dads and daughters workshops, where now we are bringing dads and daughters together to 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 bond and to bring the issue of communication so that dads now communi can communicate to their daughters in regards to their schooling, in regards to their way of life. And uh, from the exercise that we have done, um, it has brought a positive resources because now dads can talk to their daughters. In most of the communities, even where I come from, girls do not talk to their dads. But w when they talk, I think great things happen. In terms of activities and how they are coordinated on the ground, how do organizations really um, build forces to be able to implement activities in the ground? Uh, now, one of the ways of building forces is to bring resources together. Because now you have initiatives. Maybe I'm uh, co conducting a sensitization forum. The other organization is doing the same now. If we bring all these uh, resources together, we can conduct a joint initiative which can have a greater impact than me going to, mob uh, to mobilize 10 people and then the other group mobilizes 15 now, if there is a way we can now bring together a large group of people and we pass these messages to them so that they can be aware on the dangers of FGM, it will be very easy uh, for them to understand. But now, because now pre the presentation of messages is, is different. If we present a, a way of engaging men and boys, then another group presents on um, another way. Maybe they will be confuse them or make them not understand. But now when we sit down, we strategize on how we'll pass this message. Or we'll be passing this message to these people and what kind of messages will be passed to these people. It will be very easy because now uh, it will be seen now. These people are doing the same thing and now it's easy for it to come to an end. We've had people talking about, you know, the importance of letting girls to go to school and the only way that girls can go to school is through not undergoing the cut and this has happened for very many years with different organizations tackling uh, this issue and now we have to find a way to communicate to this member of uh, uh, to this member organizations in a way that everyone is able to get a clear message that this is what you're going to tell these communities is that a way you're taking or um, every every organization really has um, things that they are doing as activities that are developed from inside the organization um, and they implement or they deliver it in their own way that uh, most of them uh, w w consult the network 
on the best uh, way of uh, approaching issues in the society. And then uh, we sit down and brainstorm ideas on now, now we can approach issues uh, affecting the community, especially FGM on the ground, because you just don't go there with your message. But now, one of the things I love with our network is that uh, people consult. And uh, we have uh, very positive-minded people who brainstorm ideas and decide uh, design projects on the ground. And w that's the reason why they have been effective. Uh, what I urge, uh, what I usually do is to urge uh, members of uh, oh, different organizations, working in different places, please, even when you realize your colleague is working on the ground, please go, know what the, the strategies they are using, what, know what is working and what is not working, because now you can present what is not working, uh, and which are, whatever has been tried and has not worked, uh, th you should not repeat that. But make sure that you get what works and and uh, replicated in other places where you want maybe to work i know there's competition of resources we, we 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 need the resources at the end of the day all of us want to end fgm if we want to end fgm if, if that is our main goal why can't we work together that's why i call upon every organization to find a way of working together with the organization working on the ground otherwise if you are working well you get the, res the resources working together works very well. You talked about resources and now I'm going to delve into resources and programming in the, in the long run. We have different programs and uh, different ways to better approach the communities. Every community have an ear to, 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 to certain things. Um, and this over time is proving to be something that's um, bringing together people, especially from the same communities who understand the cultures and how to deliver this programming uh, content to them. But one thing that, ha that has stuck for a long time is repetition. The fact that there are many people who come and then they say the, sa they say the same message, but really the change is not forthcoming. Is there a way that a network brings a, a difference to this? Yes. One of the things why uh, you may work in a particular place and there's no change is when you don't involve uh, the local people. When you just go to the people, deliver the message and go and write your reports that you've met these kind of people, but there's no impact because you have not, first of all, it's good um, to work with the people from these communities, build their capacity so that they can even deliver this message because they are on the ground all the time. You'll work there and go, but now these are the, you leave those people there. But if you want to work very well as a network, how we work is that we build the capacity of the people on the ground, the local people who deliver the message. We really uh, we have what we call community change agents. We have community we train specific community members in that in particular areas which we work in, and then we empower them. Sometimes we give them uh, uh, resources to conduct activities on their own. And we have seen a lot of changes because now people can listen to them because they are members of the same community. But now when you come from where you come from and you deliver the message, people will sit down and listen and then they go home, do the same things they usually do and no change. But when you involve the people on the ground, you build their capacity, empower them, definitely change will happen. How do you ensure that there is accountability, there is follow-up, so that we don't, just don't have one single or a one-time engagement and that's it, and after writing reports, then the community still gets back to what it's been up to since inception. Yes, there's a reporting mechanism where now we have, um, after these activities, you report, and then I have said we have a community change agents, people from the ground, from the same community who do these activities, who attend meetings, community barazas, who are church members. They even get platforms in churches to speak against uh, FGM, and they report to us. And we also make sure that these people are... Um, uh, are informed with the current uh, trends of issues. And we make sure that they even attend um, uh, conferences. We, we we look for opportunities for them so that they can uh, gain more experience in un uh, addressing issues in the community. Because we know if we have them in the community, even when we are not there, they will now continue with the good work and change will be realized. And uh, one of the strategies uh, we have been using um, uh, with the community members is to ensure that there is um, consistent flow of information and reporting on the activities which they have done. And also we go to the ground and listen to what they do. Because we are, we, I go to, mm, to meetings and I listen to them delivering the message and it has been effective. You've been working as a network and that means that you are involved with the whole country um, and people voluntarily join um, this network uh, as organizations. And um, 
people have different approaches to different issues. As he said, uh, people from northern Kenya might approach FGM differently from how people from southern Kenya would do because of especially um, cultural differences, sometimes even religious differences, and the situations that are on the ground. How do you ensure, how do you ensure that these organizations um, still focus on just one issue without really fighting? Because I know that there are many networks that exist and they've, they've had lots of fights in the long run. Yes. One of the things that we do in our network when uh, we tell our members, please uh, use the approach which is acceptable by the people you are dealing with. You, you may realize the concept in Korea cannot be applied in Garissa so, or Tana River. But we ensure that if it is uh, organizations working in Garissa and uh, they are addressing the issue of FGM which um, can, uh, can bring conflicts with the religious leaders, Make sure that you engage with the religious leaders. Make sure that you engage with the community leaders or traditional leaders, either in, in Korea or any other place now where uh, the power plays around institutions uh, like tradition and religion. So we make sure that you work, use the concept that works in the particular place where you are working. And there is competition of funds, as you had said earlier, uh, in terms of uh, getting funds in through, um, of course, the network. Um, of course, because the network has much more credibility um, since it knows the members that really do the work on the ground. And these people know who will receive uh, these funds because, of course, there is a communication channel. How do you ensure that there is harmony, that these grassroots organizations do not feel left out? What we do is that uh, I said we have um, a annual general meeting where we meet with all the member organizations of the network and then we develop a joint work plan together. And then we assign responsibilities depending on the activities that organizations work on. So that uh, bl brings it to a close because now if you are addressing e FGM, uh, you will not dwell on issues of um, HIV. So we make sure that whatever you address, you are funded for that, and that's what we'll be working on. And it is it is done because we do it together and there's agreement. So when the, to, if we also do the budgeting together. So when funds come, there's no issue because you, you definitely know what you are supposed to get and what you are supposed to do. What's the impact so far with these organizations working throughout the country? Is Are there any tangible results? Definitely, there are very m many positive results uh, we have received from the testimonies and from the visiting the ground. We have had uh, very positive uh, messages from people from the ground on the changes that have, have happened. There has been a great impact in the work. And I'm very much proud of uh, the work that the network has been doing through the members. Um, great impact, great achievements, although there are challenges, but the, the impacts and the, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, achievements are more. Fantastic. So as we bring this to a close, we know that there, of course, are ev in every situation or in every organization, we either have rogue individuals or rogue organizations in this case. Have you had challenges that you've faced as a network that would help someone learn from from it, probably they'd like to start a mental health network in future or just an NFGM network in Mali, for example. What are the challenges you face and probably something that you would give advice to someone in regards to running a network? Yes, there are challenges. First of all, uh, the perception of the, the individuals as they join the network. Maybe they think there's a lot of money in this network, so when we get there, we get funds. But when they get in, they realize there are no funds. So some run away, some uh, are patient enough. Uh, maybe uh, mobilizing resources together is not uh, easy because you have to bring ideas together. And then now, there's now competition now with member organizations. That's why... As a network, we are not registered because now if we register, we'll have uh, most of the registered networks uh, cannot survive because there will be competition with other members because they are working on the same issues. Now, if we register our network, which works on several issues, uh, that means we'll be competing with our members as we apply for funding. And now because we, we are a, a network, it is very easy for us to be funded. And now when we are funded as a network, 
uh, which is registered now the leadership also uh, changes because we cannot all have all people in the leadership of the network we have to have specific people now all be in those leadership positions all be now dis- disbursing these p- funds to these organizations as a network one of the things which you should not do is that you should not uh, conduct activities because you are um, you, 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 you are a network of organization let now the members conduct their activities let them report to the network that is the best way to work, to, to work with the, to deal with the network because if you start now conducting activities you are in competition with your members you register and start mobilizing resources for these issues you start now competing with your with your members and then that's where now the problem comes so what i my take is this networks should not be registered and networks should allow their members to conduct their activities and they report to them what they have done and now th- that will be an achievement of, of 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 the network because now through the and now the opportunities that we ha- we have is a network are, are, are many because you g- you get call for proposals on different issues and then you have members working on that empower them uh, make sure that you support them in the development of the proposals for funding and now when they work it is the work of the network and the work grows i just like you to share one lesson just one one lesson that you've learned in this journey working with different organizations structured differently from different backgrounds one lesson that you've learned especially in a network uh, in a network's perspective uh, one of the greatest lesson i have learned uh, through this network is that when you work together you have greater impact in the society and uh, and with the people you serve because now you have combined efforts as opposed to working alone that is one of the greatest thing i have learned get a uh, great impact great opportunities in the society if someone wants to reach out to you how would they do that They can visit us physically at our office at Arambi Estate house number HB2. We are housed by the movement of men against AIDS in Kenya. Also they can reach us through my email elias.muindi82 at gmail.com. They can also reach us through our Twitter account at kemea10. Kemea is K E M E A 10 10. Or they can visit our Facebook page, Kenya Men Engage Alliance. And how do we get you on Twitter? Because I know that you are also active on Twitter. <laughs> yes, you can also reach me personally on Twitter at uh, at Elias Mwindi. At Elias Mwindi. That was Elias Mwindi. Uh, we have been speaking about uh, working with networks here in Kenya, and of course beyond working with organizations to bring an end to uh, harmful cultural practices. And in this case. Uh, as the podcast says uh ending fgm so thank you very much for uh, joining me here today it's really a pleasure and um one thing that i have taken um from this conversation today is as a swahili saying goes umoja ni nguvu tengano ni udhaifu that's when we come together things work out more easily So thank you very much for that and I hope that someone uh, else is able to benefit from this. And to the listener, thank you very much for listening to the NFGM podcast. From the NFGM podcast production crew, Jeremiah Kipainoi, that's me, uh Tony Mwebia and Matilda Timpian. Thank you very much and I'll see you or I'll hear from you or you'll hear from me next Monday. <laughs> You can get bonus materials, notes and much more at www.kipainoi.com. K I P A I N O I.com. Please remember, we all can do something. Go out and make a difference. For we all have a responsibility to make this world a better place. Goodbye.